Howdy folks, we are about to take this big 6110R here and we're going to go do some heading. Um, once I get this tether to go the direction I want it to, I'm actually going the, the wrong way. So, let me get turned around here. Oh, I took the loader off of this tractor and I'll tell you what. It really makes some nice visibility without the loader on it. But I was very, 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 very impressed with how easy the loader comes off of this tractor. Um, it's the easiest loader I've ever taken off any tractor. And as y'all know, I've had quite a few tractors. But this is my first... Well, actually this is my second John Deere tractor, counting the, uh, the little 1026R, and the loader comes off really easy on it. But as far as big tractors go, I was very, very impressed with how the loader comes off. Uh, I will have to make a video on that. You only have to get out of the tractor one time. Um, you just park the loader, relieve the hydraulic pressure you get out one time flip the latches put the legs down and unhook the hydraulics and get back in the tractor and back away it's, and right over there sets the uh oh there's the loader by the way uh, but yeah it, i was just like two minutes taking this loader off and i'd never done it before but uh um, yeah, we're pulling up here to this hay field at my dad's, and uh, I'm going to tet it. It's the second cutting. Y'all watch me bail this field. This is my dad's house right here. Y'all watch me bail this field uh, earlier in a video this year with the T5, and uh, I guess we'll be bailing it now with this 6110R, 6110 slash 130R. Uh, because of eco tune, we got a lot more power than 110. Uh, so anyway, we'll get this tether fired up, and I don't have I don't have any way to mount this camera yet. I hadn't got my suction cup deal or anything like that, so I don't know how well this is going to go. Okay, me back, as my son would say. Uh, rev it up. Unless you have really good hearing, you probably can't hardly even hear the tractor. But uh, I've got it on 540E. Range D. I'm on the range D. And I use gear one and two. Uh, sometimes I use three in really flat field. Gear one is 5.4 miles an hour. Gear two is 6.5. And uh, there's not a lot of hay right here in this particular spot. But there is a pretty good amount of hay in this field. Um, like I said, it is second cutting. It did about 200 bales on the first cutting. I think it was like 196 small square bales and that's that's pretty good for this field and basically I'm not doing anything right now there's not any hay where I'm at there's it's always pretty thin right here under these trees I don't know if it doesn't get the sunlight the rest of it does or what but I still go ahead and run the tether over just just for fun I guess this is a this is a very important part of making small square bales in uh, in the east. You, you really got to you got to spend a lot of time trying to get the hay dry, and, and running the tater over is uh, really helps to get it dry. I mean, if I was round baling this, I've already tetted it once. If I was round baling it, that would be good enough, I would think, for cow hay. But as far as trying to get perfectly dry square bales around 16% with a high 
humidity we have, you got you about have to tent it multiple times, and uh, this is the way it is here where I live. So I know some people don't understand tanning hay, but it's basically because of our weather. It's just our it's the way our weather is here. It's just not it's not hot and dry here. It's just I mean it gets hot, but it's not dry. Humidity of 90%. Just standing outside, sweat starts dripping off of you. You don't even have to move. But, uh, yeah, this is what you gotta do. But I'm really, really, really enjoying this tractor. I mean, it may blow up tomorrow. I hope not since I don't really have a warranty, but I uh, I have really been enjoying this thing. I mean, I didn't, I didn't, ex I knew it was a nice tractor, but I didn't expect it to be, I didn't expect it to be, I didn't expect it to meet my expectations, I believe, I, I believe that's how I'll put it. Yeah, so, I mean, it, it Everything that I was expecting out of it, it has provided, uh, surpassed my expectations on. Um, it rides good, it's quiet, it's smooth, it, uh, it's fun to operate. It has all kinds of gadgets that, I, that are functional that I like to use. Um, it doesn't have, seem to have very many annoying things about it. There is only one, there is one annoying thing about this tractor that, that I can say about it, but it's it's not a big issue. It's uh, vibration. And it's not, it's not anything in the field. Uh, it's just a road thing. You get out on the road and at certain speeds, it's like the tires have a harmonic vibration that just that makes everything in the cab just vibrate and make noise but um, you can either speed up or slow down and the vibration will go away or get less um, less violent I guess I could say so but other than that there's nothing I can complain about absolutely nothing I mean everything is this really, really well thought out and well laid out and a very modern, I would say, compared to what I'm used to. Um, so yeah, I'm just blown away so far. And don't know why it took so long for me to find what I was looking for, I guess. Um, The other, on the, you know, I had a T4, New Holland, and everything about it drove me nuts, it seemed like. And then we went to the T5, New Holland actually bought back that T4. I complained about it so much. We went to the T5, and it was a decent tractor other than it had, it had annoying, things like the transmission just whined extremely loud and I know a lot of people on my channel complained about how loud that tractor was um, and I don't know why it was that way other than other than I guess it was just poor tolerances on you know machining gears and the transmission and stuff I don't know you can't hear all that noise in our 6030 and it's got basically the same transmission, so I don't understand what the difference is there. This tractor's this transmission is super quiet. And uh, that was an issue. It had some some several warranty issues. You know, the, the engine spun a bearing when it had 300 hours on it, which that was all fixed and but it's still in the back of your mind. Is that going to come back and haunt you later on in life? Like the 
goes to Christmas past or something. I don't know. Um, and then there was that noise when I was square bailing, that banging noise. And there was a noise. It was it was related to the banging noise when I would run that the Teagle straw blower. There was a noise in there when you would turn, and the PTO would get in a little bit of a little bit of a turn. It didn't take much of a turn. It, you could hear that same kind of banging noise in there that the square power made, except it was a lot faster. And, you know, I don't know if that's anything that was going to cause problems down the road. I've heard other people talking about that it was, uh, that their T5 done the same thing, so it may have been a normal thing for that tractor, but it just irritated the pee out of me. And, uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend a T5 for square bailing. If you're doing square bailing, I wouldn't recommend a T5 for doing it. Um, I mean, they can do it, but I, I don't recommend it. And now round bailing, it didn't have any problems. It didn't make any noise, just the transmission, normal transmission line. Uh, but anyway. Um, so that's where it went with that tractor. I just got tired of the warranty ran out and I just got tired of listening to it whine and bang and who knew what was going to break from the whining and banging and uh, you know there was nothing wrong with it when I got rid of it and it was perfectly fine to use and you know and it may it may live thousands and thousands of hours and uh, but in my brain uh, you know I lost I lost confidence in it especially when the engine lost the bearing, so. Uh, so, the Massey Ferguson I demoed, it did not meet my expectations. It had, and it had problems right out of the gate, and I didn't want to start with problems out of the gate, just like the T5 and the T4, and you know, I just didn't want to go there, so. That's where the, the Massey first 5712, it left. Um, you know, I've got the Massey Ferguson uh, 4710, you know, sitting over there in the building. The only reason I'm not using it to TED is because I got this tractor's new and I'm in, just uh, enjoying operating it. Um, and this is a very rough field right here, by the way. It's not, it's not that smooth. But this tractor handles handles it well. Uh, you don't see me flying around in the cab like you did in that 5712. Um, and I'm going basically the same speed. So um, anyway, the 4710 I think is an excellent tractor still. So you know it, it's it's quiet for what it is for its price. Range. It's, it's really it's a really nice tractor. Uh, it's, it has met my expectations on basically everything. It uh, it also has vibration going down the road at times and at certain speeds. It it can get vibrating in the field at certain speeds also. But I haven't noticed that on this tractor. Just on just the vibration on the road. And I think that's partly due to not having cab suspension on this tractor or that tractor. You get more vibrations from from the tires and stuff like that. But, um, the T5 didn't really have any vibration going down the road, uh, but it did have this rattling noise I could hear from the four-wheel drive, which was supposed to be normal. Um, you could hear it going down the road, wide open. You could hear something that sounded like a chain dragging along under the tractor. dealer worked on it trying to figure out what the banging noise was. Um, he took the four-wheel drive apart since he was already there anyway and he said there was nothing in there that was wrong. So the, the, it was just some fingers in there that when the four-wheel drive was disengaged they rattled. So but that's what it sounded like to somebody dragging a chain along underneath the tractor. So that was kind of annoying too, but anyway, we don't have to worry about that anymore. Um, but yeah, you know, I guess I have high 
expectations, but uh, when you spend over $100,000 or something, you, you should have high expectations, right? I mean, these things aren't cheap, and and they just seem to throw them together like they're just like they're uh, your kid's toy or something, and they don't take the time and effort to make sure that they're quality products going out the door. I don't understand how they can run a business that way, but, um, you know, it is what it is, I guess. And everything's getting that way. So far, this tractor is doing it for me, so hopefully, hopefully I can have a good relationship with this tractor for a long, long time and I don't have to worry about trading and trying to get something different. And, uh, yeah. So I've rambled on quite long enough, I guess. And, uh, I guess I'll, uh, I've got several fields to head. i got about 15 acres down, but they're all in like two acre fields, one four acre field. It's just kind of a mess, so I just got to do a whole lot of road riding. Alright, so we're in a different field now, Ted, and uh, <laughs> from, from the time I talked to y'all just a few minutes ago till now, it has rained, and I know the sun's shining again now. It's, I mean, it just, this weather is just crazy, but it rain eh, I bet it didn't rain a tenth of an inch but if you know I don't know if you can see the tires on the tether but they're wet and the hay is wet but the strange thing is <clears throat> this field here is about three miles from the field I was in a little bit ago well the field I was in a little bit ago did not get rain it did not rain out there and the field next to it, it rained just slightly while I was there, and then it moved on, and the sun come back out. But as I, the further I went to the east, I uh, went about three miles east to get to this field, and uh, it's rained quite a bit out here. So these thunderstorms, and it, it was 10% chance of rain today. So that's kind of, you know, it's just. They can't get the weather right. They'll say it's 40% and then the sun will shine all day and you wish you'd mowed hay and then it's 10% and you mow hay and then it rains. Uh, so I don't I don't know how you're supposed to decipher this stuff. <laughs> it's very frustrating. But uh, anyway, still riding in the 6110 here obviously and still having some lots of fun anyway but fortunately as far as the rain goes it didn't rain enough to do any damage to the hay it's basically like a, like a, a morning dew which are which is pretty pretty heavy around here the morning dews are so it's, I don't think it's or I know it's not going to hurt this hay any uh, no more than it rained it was literally like a, a five to ten minute event and then it was gone and now the sun's back so uh, we're in good shape on that just i just hope it don't do that again tomorrow i plan on bailing this tomorrow and hopefully it will stay dry enough i can bail it tomorrow so i'm still i never did really stop kicking i stopped and got me some coffee while I was waiting on it to rain and then it, when it quit raining I just started kicking again because it's not really the, re the reason I'm kicking it, it's not really because of the rain it's because I, there's still green underneath you know you got hay on top that's dried and then underneath you'll have some green clumps and that's what I'm trying to get rid of is the green clumps uh, you spread them out and the sun can 
get to them when the sun decides to shine and uh, you know the rain will dry off pretty quick but the uh, green clumps they dry a little slower and uh, but they need to be facing the sun as much as possible so that's basically the reason why I'm still tending it but anyway see y'all later that's gonna be it this is it this time I'm done I'm done talking in this video just wanna ride and listen to the music see y'all later